All right, so as you see, the kind of door to the furnace is opening. So this is a very tight-knit team effort. So as Carrie is working on the rinsing and drying steps uh, after that HF dip, now we need to kind of coordinate with Todd so that he can start opening up the furnace. And you guys will see Todd in just a second, but uh, this way we kind of have everything kind of working together very nicely. So as you see, it's a very slow process to open this furnace door. And we do that because the temperatures are so high, we don't want to crack anything that's inside or that we can access. So it's going to be a somewhat slow process. Therefore, once Carrie's adding that to the rinsing and drying steps of the kind of uh, cleaning steps, that's when we can start to open this so that we can actually move forward and prepare the furnace so it's a nice, quick, fluid process. All right, so I'll go ahead and explain some things about the furnace before we actually load into it. So this blue box right here, that's called the mass flow controller. That's going to control the amount of uh, gas that we're going to allow into it, as well as the rate that is coming in. Uh, this stainless steel box right here, you see this water line coming out, so that's going to be where our steam is going to be generated from. So that steam is going to drip in, and it's using DI water, and then it's going to be a water vaporizer that turns that water drip into a steam, and then that gets ported into the furnace so that we can control our oxidation rate. So that steam is what actually causes it. And in just a second here, we'll go ahead and show you around the side to show you where the thermocouple is, where we're actually gonna measure that temperature inside. All right, so we got the gas kind of flowing in through the back of the tubes. Tubes are kind of right here. And then this metal guy right here, that's gonna be our thermocouple. That's how we can actually measure the temperature inside the, uh, inside the furnace. So using this thermocouple, and we have one per furnace, uh, that's how we're going to maintain the consistency that we need. Alright, so we have an element. The element is just like the oven that you have at home. It just has a big coil of wires. So we have big coil of wires the length of this. And the element is broken into three zones. And you can see we have the ground wire. And then we have three wires, one to control the temperature on each zone. And then also, these little white ceramics. These are spike TCs. TC is a thermocouple. So we can control the, uh, we can monitor the temperature on the outside of the quartz tube. So as you see, Todd is holding uh, one of the wafers. We've got all of the boat almost ready. So we're gonna go ahead and load that last wafer into the quartz boat that it's gonna travel into inside the furnace. So as he loads it, uh, just take note that there are gonna be dummy wafers on both sides of the project wafers. So the project wafers should sit on the inside, and the dummy wafers are going to be on the kind of front and back of all of those project wafers. So go ahead and point out those top uh, dummy wafers for me, Todd. All the way down to that, and then all of those back there. Perfect. So the reason for those dummy wafers is so that we don't get inconsistencies in our oxide growth. So if we have any of those wafers on kind of the ends, first of all, we're going to have a temperature difference from the very end of the furnace into where the wafers will sit. Uh, secondly, as we're getting that airflow in and that steam generation, that circulation is gonna be kind of bouncing back and forth. So as it's going one way, it's gonna hit the wall and bounce back the other way. So what's at the front and the back of that boat is gonna get hit from both sides kind of a lot more than everything else. So having our wafers in the center is what we need to do so that we have consistency of our oxide growth. Uh, where they're at as far as in the center kind of depends on the furnace itself and how many project wafers you have. Right? So I'm going to take, we're all Sun Devils, right? So I'm going to take my Sun Devil fork and uh, load these wafers up. And at this point we would start the recipe. So here's an example of our recipe. We have unload of the boat, then we're gonna load the wafers, and then boat in, temp stabilize, and then we're gonna ramp, this is temp ramp. It takes two and a half hours. We're gonna ramp that up to 1,050 degrees Celsius. We do it over two and a half, period, two and a half hours to uh, slowly increase so we don't in, uh, cause any thermal stress on the silicon wafers. And then we do a stable temp, and then the pre-steam is flows pure oxygen to kind of clean all the nitrogen out of the tube. And then you notice here with steam one, 
the thing I want to point out about Steam 1 right now, we have an entry of 3 hours and 15 minutes. We can change that time to vary the thickness of our oxide. So we're ready to start the recipe. All we're going to do is push run, and now the control system will take care of everything automatically. We can see that the time is 11 hours, 44 minutes. 